Hello guys and thank you for joining me for another video. It is a dark and stormy night, well day rather, where I am today. So if you hear any of that in the background, sorry about that. I've been kind of sitting on this Francis the Pope came out and said something again. So Pope Francis becomes first Pope to endorse same-sex civil unions. Ugh. Okay. I don't even know where to start. Let's just read a little bit here. I'll get my cursor over where it needs to be. There we go. And just sort of go through it. So this says, Pope Francis became the first pontiff to endorse same-sex civil unions and comments for a documentary that premiered Wednesday, sparking cheers from gay Catholics and demands for clarification from conservatives, given the Vatican's official teaching on the issue. So pretty much all of modern or Christianity in general is against same-sex marriage, civil unions, any of that. Mostly because Christianity believes that <clears throat> God created marriage. He created it between a man and a woman. And that's just how it should be. And that's it in a nutshell. We could get into like some of the psychological stuff. Get into how kids are affected by this, etc. But we're not going to do that in this video. Um, this right here. Let's just go on actually before I make my first point. He says, homosexual people have the right to be in a family. They are children of God, Francis said. You can't kick someone out of a family, nor make their life miserable for this. What we have to have is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered. If you have a will or you have documentation of any kind that says this person gets this or has this, you can, you can give people um, power of attorney. You can do all of those things, and these people can do... As soon as somebody has power of attorney, they can change and run your entire life. That's all they need. They can visit you in jail. They can visit you in the hospital. They can do all of those things. That's all you have to do. Um, uh, my big opinion on marriage is basically that the government should stay out of it. The government didn't make marriage. They can't decide what it is or they shouldn't be giving us like, if you're married or not married sorry you know as far as the taxes thing there shouldn't be like uh oh you're married let's lessen your taxes it should be you're you're taxed for what you work for individually and I think that is how it should be not you know well if you're married now you get you know for a long time there was a marriage penalty and then there was a marriage write-off it should just be each individual is taxed based on what they earn if you don't earn anything you're not taxed uh, but if you do earn, then you're taxed. And I'm for, you know, 1% uh, tax across the board for everybody. 1%. I don't think we need it any higher than that. I think you start getting the 2, 3, 4. I think right like right now we're, not, we're at 12% or something. It's, it's now ridiculous. And it's making it harder for people to live. So there's my little tax rant. <laughs> this is kind of why I should have written this down, but I didn't. So now I'm just kind of rambling. His comment about homosexual people being the children of God. So in the sense of God did make every human being on this planet, or if you want to look at it as he allowed them to be here, that's true. That doesn't mean that not allowing someone to do something is kicking them out of that situation. Someone being created by God is just a fact of their life. That is what is. You can't kick them out of there. So no one's being kicked out of anything because you basically can't do that. Nor make their life miserable for this. You're not making their life miserable by not giving them perks for being married. Because that's basically what they want. Okay. So while serving as Archbishop of Buenos Aires, Francis endorsed civil unions for gay couples as an alternative to same-sex marriages. However, he had never come out publicly in favor of civil unions as Pope, and no pontiff before him had either. And that's true because Christianity is against that. A civil union is a marriage. When, when I say I'm married, to me it has two meanings. It has the legal meaning of I'm married, so these certain things happen. And then also the religious meaning of I've made a covenant with my husband and God to stay with my husband sicker or poor, you know, <laughs> sickness or health, rich or poor, whatever happens, I'm going to work it out with him. I heard somebody one time say, you know, we got into this huge fight. 
I had a gun, she had a gun, we marched off 10 paces, fired, and whoever, you know, you know, it can get crazy sometimes, but that is what I'm promising. I'm promising that through the craziness, through the stupidity, through all of this, through the harm, whatever happens, I'm promising to stay and work it out and make it through until death do us part, okay? This, as far as I have seen in my life, exists very rarely for gay homosexual relationships. There was one for a guy that I know lasted a long time, but then they split up. There, when it does exist, most of the research that's done, it exists in like lesbian situations. And even then, they're not loyal or faithful to each other. And that's just the research when you go into it. So even if I thought that this would be something that could actually be analogous or analogous to heterosexual marriage, it would still be wrong based on other things. I mean, it's not. There's this, these unions break up more than ours. So anyway... So it says the Pope speaking positively about civil unions also sends a strong message to places where the church has opposed such laws, Martin said in a statement. However, conservative Bishop Thomas Tobin of Providence, Rhode Island, called for clarification. The Pope's statement clearly contradicts what has been the longstanding teaching of the church about same-sex unions, he said in a statement. Sorry. The church cannot support the acceptance of objectively immoral relationships. This is what it gets down to to me. Just because the Pope said something doesn't mean it's right. Just because your pastor says something doesn't mean it's right. For me, this is why in the Bible it says, For you to study and know what you believe for yourself and to give an answer. And so you can give an answer. It's for yourself and so you can give an answer. So you're not supposed to go to church, open your Bible just when your pastor says to open it to, and then never study it, never look into it yourself. Pastors, popes, leaderships, they are human beings and therefore wrong. Just right off the bat. Like I can tell you different situations where I've disagreed with the pastor I have now, with the pastor I've had before, you know, well, I've only actually had two, but, um, when I became a Christian, that pastor, there's places where I've disagreed because in the Bible, because they either won't address something that's in the Bible or they just say, you know, I don't believe that's what that means or whatever. So we disagree. Disagreement in Christianity is supposed to happen. That is what I understand. What is not supposed to happen is that once I disagree with you, I am then, you know, allowed to disrespect you. That's not supposed to happen. I can walk away from a conversation still disagreeing with someone. And the Bible says that my job then is to still love them, to still respect them. Okay. That's a biblical Christian concept. It doesn't really exist anywhere else as far as I can tell. So let's scroll down. There's one I wanted to read. Let's see if I can find it. Um, and I can't find it now. I should have just (laughs) highlighted it. And I want to say that it looks like, so let's see. Francis outreach dates his first foreign trip in 2013 when he uttered the now famous words, who am I to judge when asked during an airborne news conference returning from Rio de Janeiro about a purportedly gay priest. Since then, he has ministered to gays and transsexual prostitutes and welcomed people in gay partnerships into his inner circle. One of them was his former student, Ye- Yeo Grassi, who, along with his partner, visited Francis at the Vatican Embassy in Washington, D.C. during a 2015 visit to the U.S. This one article just... <laughs> these layers keep opening it up. Okay, so here, right here. It is not bad or wrong to minister to people who are in their sin and enjoying it or in their sin and maybe are struggling with it. It's not wrong to do that. What is wrong, what the Bible says, is that your inner circle of friends, the people you keep closest to you, the people that you tell things that you maybe wouldn't tell anybody else because they're going to pray for you, they're going to understand you're struggling, they're going to do all this, is not people who are actively disobeying God the way that like transsexual prostitutes are or the way that gay people do every time they 
instigate into this relationship. Okay. Every, I would say even every time they're out there being like, yeah, I'm gay. There's nothing wrong with it. There is, there's stuff wrong with it. The, I guess I shouldn't make a video about that. But anyway, <clears throat> okay. So this is why God says that as soon as you start letting people in certain, you know, certain people into your inner circle, it changes how you see things and what you think. All right. So you have to be careful about who you let in to your daily life as far as who you're telling, like I would say your secrets to maybe, or maybe not secrets, but then maybe just, I think everybody understands what I mean when you say inner circle, when they say inner circle, these are people that he had over, that he discussed things with, that he, uh, allowed to change his opinion on things, stuff like that. And I don't want you guys to get it twisted. It is okay to talk to people who have differing viewpoints. It is okay to, to let people, to have a conversation with somebody who has a hundred degree, completely different idea than you do. Okay. What the Bible says is that you don't go to those people and then be like, Hey man, pray for me for this, because this person is not going to understand that. These the people who are not Christian, who don't believe what you do, are going to try and get you to believe the other way. Just like we want to make people believe God. That's what we want. Because we know that's going to save them in the end. It's going to change their life for the better. It's going to do all that. So it's better to stay with people, your inner circle, to be people who believe God's real, who would pray for you, who would do that stuff, instead of people who would not. So <clears throat> this right here, this is why God says, as far as I understand it anyway, so like you wouldn't, your inner circle shouldn't be drunks because you're just going to have drama. They're going to be negative all the time. It's not going to lead toward a godly life. They're not going to uh, help encourage you into things that are good. And this right here proves that this is what I'm saying. Now that he has done this, the Bible's right again. They changed his, the way he looks at things and now it's okay. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible is very clear about what marriage is, what sex is for, um, what the context of sex is, what happens whenever you are in a sexual relationship that's not good, you know, rape, etc. So here we go. Just keeps delivering. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to scroll down a bit more, see if we can see anything else. Let's see. I'm trying to actually find something where it's let's just do this. More conservative commentators sought to play down Francis's words and said that while secular civil unions are one thing, a church blessing of them is quite another. So here we have the Catholic church, I think is about to split again. Or maybe this is just one more step in the split that we've been watching. Because this, you can't be all about standing on the Bible and then all of a sudden have your leader and don't get and don't get it twisted. Catholic people do think that the Pope has a direct connection to God that they couldn't possibly have. So when he starts saying things that are against the Bible, he's got to go because it doesn't match and God doesn't go against the Bible. So something has happened where they're going to, they're going to say his connection is bad or whatever. So, <clears throat> I don't believe that pastors or popes or anybody in leadership has a greater connection than say I do. I believe the Holy Spirit maybe talks to them to do their job. So maybe he talks to them about different things, but not a more, not more intensely. So I just want to close with this Catholic teaching holds that gay people must be treated with dignity and respect for that homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered. A 2003 document from the Vatican's Doctrine Office stated that the church's respect for gay people cannot lead in any way to approval of homosexual behavior or to legal recognition of homosexual unions. And that is where I stand as well. Intrinsically disordered is a very nice way to say it. That's just wrong. It's not the way God wants us to do things. I mean, I'll... That's what I agree with right there. So we'll see what happens to Pope Francis. I'm pretty sure they're going to have him step down. And we're going to see a new Pope pretty soon. <laughs> uh, I think that, that 
I don't think that has ever happened. I think they've actually all either aged out or died. So we'll see. Because this, he's going directly against what the church stands for. He's going directly against what the Bible says. And so therefore God, you know what I mean? So uh, what'd you guys think about this? Were you surprised? I have to say I wasn't surprised at all. He has come out and said other things before that made me go, hmm, I don't know about this guy. I don't think he's going to last. I don't think he's going to be Pope for very long. And I was wrong about that because he's been Pope for like, God, must be 10 years. So longer than I thought. I was really surprised when he was appointed because of his more liberal views. Uh, I'm not really sure how he got there, but... (laughs) Let's just say I'm not really surprised to read any of this. I'm not really surprised of the controversy that he creates. I will be surprised if they leave him there, though. So we'll see what happens. What do you guys think? Did you even know this happened? Um, I didn't. Nobody in the Christian sphere is talking about it. The, nobody in the uh, conservative sphere is talking about it. I learned about it because um, ABC News is talking about it. <laughs> So just let me know your thoughts down in the comments, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Um, And I will see you in the next one. Let me see here. All right. Bye.